is honestly such an honor and such a privilege to get to work on Batwoman. I mean, she's my favorite superhero, bar none. I'm so proud of what we did. I'm so happy that I got to work with the editors and you know, that we had like the shepherding and the guidance that we did. And it was just really lovely, you know, to be able to sort of, you know, give the character a rebirth and, and a point of closure. Um, and so I'm hoping that, you know, we gave the future writers some good toys in the toolbox. I've always wanted to ask you about writing bombshells and writing Batwoman in bombshells, and then writing her own story. Yeah. How does the character change between the two, or oh, does she? I mean, she does, I like, um, especially because um, the events that define each character's um, life, and you know, the, the things that forge them in each timeline are very different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially, you know, down, just down to the era, but then also, you know, like the, 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 the training, or the traumas, or you know, the, the things that, um, that helped define who they became. And uh, I mean, it's down to like, you know, even how the language plays out, you know, like um, Batwoman in main continuity, you know, has like much more of sort of a, a militaristic background, you know, her father did. And so like, there's much more of a, a Southern cadence, like, you know, in the, you know, in the, in the military slang. And uh, for our bombshells Batwoman, you know, growing up in like, um, you know, sort of a, a, ni a 1930s and 40s, it's much more like, you know, popping, crackling cadence, um, you know, with like, like, you know, some, some more like, like Yiddish slang and um, having it in there. And uh, so it's really fun, honestly. And it was like my cup float like overflowed with Batwoman in my life, um, and getting to you know pop between the two. And sometimes you know even in lettering passes, I would I would swap the sign and be like, that's not right, and <laughs> have to put it back. So, but it was it was really fantastic. And we finally have a live action Batwoman. Yes. How does it feel to have a character who you worked so hard on and developed so much? be portrayed in live action. Is that exciting for you? Oh, extremely. You know, and just, you know, beyond my association with her at all, just to have that, you know, for the, for the up and coming generations and you know for people who survive so much that you know they that they have to see so much LGBTQ media and just to you know have her as a natural part of the universe you know as a rightful part of the universe and um, you know so I just I can't wait to watch just as a fan I'm just so excited and just so delighted to, to sit in that audience when she makes her first appearance on the screen yeah same I feel like we're getting a lot of new live action characters right now and she is such a good choice and I'm I'm so excited to see her um, so, you touched on this a little bit, but it's not a fun time to be a woman or a person of uh, in the LGBTQ community. How are you coping with it? Are you writing through it? How are you dealing with it? You know, I wish I had a pithy answer, but I don't. Um, it's been very difficult. You know, I feel burned out a lot. I feel... I frequently feel hopeless, you know, and I, I wish I wish that I had something else, you know, I wish I had a really good soundbite PR line, sure. but I don't, and, but I also don't want to blame myself for that, because then that's just doing the battle for them, like, I'm not, like, they can beat me, but I won't beat myself. Like, totally. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, are you active on social media right now? Because I feel like I've like withdrawn from it for that reason. How are you doing? Yeah, I actually quit social media about a year ago. Um, so that's like I'm on Instagram where I post pictures of food, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, anything to give us a little bit of joy, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and speaking of joy, uh, bombshells again. Oh, we're gonna go back. <laughs> sure. Um, is there a character that you've wanted to put in bombshells that you haven't had a chance to yet? Oh goodness. I mean, if we were allowed to run long enough, like you know, like there are so many heroines that you know, I wish that we could have had the chance to you know to give the fitting arcs that they deserved. Cassandra Kane was one of the ones who I was so looking forward to writing her story with Katana, and I am really hoping you know maybe one day we do like a bombshell graphic novel so I can yeah. tell that story to its fullest extent yeah. Um, but yeah like it was it was really a delight and I would love to revisit any of them in the bombshells universe out of the bombshells yeah. universe like it was yeah. just a dream and I say that that way because I've refused to believe you're done with it oh, I'm geez. like <laughs> I just want bombshells forever yeah, I would love um, it. I would love it. so yeah uh, is there anything else you're working on um, oh, that we should know about that we might not Know about. Sure. Um, yeah, I just took over Power Rangers um, at Boom Studios. Yeah, uh, yeah which has been a lot of fun. And I've got um, my creator-owned series, Animosity, uh, that just got optioned by Legendary. And nice. so, like, that's been like a whole new world um, of which I knew nothing. <laughs> and uh, then I've got like some things in the works at DC, you know, that are ideally, you know, will come to fruition in 2019. So cool. keep your eyes peeled.